It's taking over There's no escape Over your shoulder Don't look away Get your mind right For something you ain't ever seen The fire's blazing The storm is raging Here it comes now, here it comes This season was a blessing. Back when COVID started in March, I thought to myself, this will all be sorted out by the time August gets here. That was me being hopefully optimistic, but the thought of going through a fall without having a volleyball season was more than I could wrap my brain around. Our kids had already lost a majority of their club season. We had a strange, small group summer where we weren't even able to touch the same ball. In early August, I found myself not so optimistic. The WIAA had pushed the season start date back three weeks, and we were in front of the school board begging for a chance to play. We were given an opportunity, thanks to a lot of hard work from our athletic director and commitment from our players and parents to do it right under new circumstances, even though it was different. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for jumping through all of the hoops with me in order for us to have 30 practices, 13 matches, and three team events together. It may not have been a normal year, but we now share memories that will last a lifetime. Ultimately, the girls wanted a season in the fall because they wanted a chance to compete for a state title. We dodged a lot of bullets in those nine weeks, but we achieved our goal. We had got to play at state and compete for a title. And no one wants to win state more than I do. But when you put into perspective the state of the world in the last nine months, our season was a blessing. There's just no other way to say it. I would like to take a second to recognize each one of my athletes individually. They are all unique, talented, and special players. When thinking about the order, I considered numerically, youngest to oldest, and I settled on alphabetically by class starting with sophomores. Ironically, Abby Bannett is first in all three categories. So let's kick off the player recognition. Yeah, I know the pain in her 
I love that Abby was nicknamed the firecracker because I think it is absolutely fitting for her. She brings a spark of energy to this team through her scrappy defense and her contagious spirit. Every day that we were able to be in the gym together, working as a team, Abby made us better. I appreciate the commitment she made to her own development. She took corrections, made changes, and she always gave a great effort. I also appreciate the fact that she expected the same in return from each of her teammates. Statistically, she finished the season passing a 2.04 in 55 attempts. She also contributed 2.16 digs per set. Abby had her best serving night on the road at Rice Lake with four aces and zero errors. Her confidence grew as the season went on, and I know that she's going to carry that momentum into her club season. Like many athletes on our roster, I've had the pleasure of watching Abby grow up in the game. All the way back to her early years when her spandex were baggy, and she had to put every ounce of muscle into that underhand serve. She has evolved into quite a composed and tenacious athlete. I'm beyond excited to see where the next two years of her high school career take her and beyond. The sky is the limit. Abby Bannett has earned the Rookie of the Year Award for the 2020 season. Number two, Abby Bannett. Brianna is the second member of our super sophomore class and another athlete whose nickname is most fitting. Badgers are known for being fearless, and that is what comes to mind when I think of Brianna. Being a good defensive player takes a certain mentality. And when I look in her eyes, I see a player that will relentlessly pursue the ball to keep it off the floor. I see a smaller outside that jumps big and hits hard. And I see a server that can absolutely bomb the ball. I see Badger aggressiveness in all that she does. Brianna finished the season leading us in aces with 22, just edging out Gertie, who finished with 21. An even more impressive stat was that she only had three service errors on the season, and she led us in attempts with a total of 152. She served 98% of her serves inbounds. She also contributed 72 kills and 105 digs on the year. Her best match of the year was at Menominee, where she drilled nine kills on 11 attempts, with no hitting errors, hitting 818. Brianna may seem quiet on the outside, but for those who've had a chance to truly get to know her, they know that she's loud and silly and so much fun to be around. As intense as she can be on the court, she's equally enjoyable to be with off the court. That balance makes her not only a great competitor, but a fantastic teammate. Number three, Brianna Brathel. Teams change year after year, and with that, an athlete's role evolves. Morgan did a wonderful job last season as her starting setter after injuries sidelined both Maddie and Maddie. She did so well that she earned the Rookie of the Year in 2019. This year on varsity was different. Morgan was stronger and more physical. She expanded the range of balls that she could run down, get her hands on, and make hittable. She became a threat on offense. In short, she grew her game in every capacity. That growth wasn't just physical, though. During the preseason meetings, the team recognized leadership qualities in her as well. They valued her consistent, lead-by-example, effort in the gym day in and day out, along with her even-tempered demeanor on the court. For these reasons, Morgan was one of our three captains this season. She was also our assist leader, totaling 326 assists for the season, averaging 9.06 assists per set. This is her second year leading the assist category. I believe that great players step up and compete in matches when it matters the most. Morgan's playoff numbers were higher than her regular season stats against weaker competition. She averaged over 11 assists and four digs a set throughout the playoffs and was hitting almost 300. Morgan got the attention of coaches statewide and was named second team All-State this season. 
With her competitive spirit, I know she'll continue to grow as a player, and I'm already looking forward to getting back in the gym with her next season. Number five, Morgan Cayley. There are so many positive things that I can say about Taylor Peterson. It's hard to know where to start. She is such a hard worker. She's a competitor, and she's a very smart player. I love to watch her matched up against Anna in practice, in drills, knowing that there's a slight height disadvantage. Taylor doesn't back down. She finds a way to be successful, regardless of who's on the other side of the net. And more importantly, she thrives in those situations. Tay started our first match of the year on the road at Chippewa Falls. She finished the match with five kills, hitting 364. She also left there with a severely sprained ankle. Knowing that our season was short, it looked like she might be sidelined for the duration. She did everything she could to get back out on the court. While on the IR, our team had to make some adjustments, and it was hard for her to come back into that same role. What impressed me most about Taylor was the attitude and maturity with which she approached that situation. There was zero self-pity. She had open and honest conversations with me, continued to take advantage of every opportunity she was given, and was the most supportive teammate. Taylor was the loudest person on our bench during matches. She was not only cheering for her teammate's success, but was also communicating important information during rallies. She never put her own personal desire over the team. She's truly selfless. For that reason, Taylor has earned the Spirit Award for our 2020 season. With her athletic ability and her desire to improve and compete, I'm looking forward to all that's in store for Taylor Peterson. Number 14, Taylor Peterson. I find trying to describe Maddie Derry to be almost impossible. I call her Gertie because she's an old soul with a great deal of maturity. Yet at the same time, she's a free spirit who loves to live life. She is an anomaly and for the second straight year has genuinely surprised me. Our COVID quote from Raleigh at the start of the season was to be positive, be flexible, and be ready. He was obviously referring to the potential for constant changes. He could have very easily have been talking about Maddie because she jumps into whatever role is needed of her and does so with the most positive can-do attitude. Maddie went from being a defensive player to a six-rotation right side following Amelia's move to the middle. She not only embraced the, ta- embraced the challenge, but discovered a new passion for hitting. She ripped seven kills, hitting 375 against Chippewa Falls in the playoffs, one of our most competitive matches of the season. Against New Richmond, she set a playoff record for seven aces in a set. Although she was not a stat leader in any one particular category at the end of the season, she made major contributions in all of them. Maddie's passion for the sport of volleyball has grown year by year over the course of her high school career. That compiled with her hard work ethic, I'm excited to see what her senior year could be. Number 13, Maddie Derry. Bryn is one of the most aggressive hitters I've had a chance to coach in my tenure at River Falls. She's tall with a high contact point and a heavy arm. That's a deadly combination. Match highlights for Bryn include on the road at Chai High, where she had five kills hitting 556, and at Menominee, where she had three kills hitting 400, as well as adding three aces. She was actually called for a center line violation at Menominee, and I had to question the official because she hit the ball so hard it landed before her feet hit the ground. One of the best hits all year. Unfortunately, Bryn was sidelined for two weeks during our very short season due to quarantine. She did everything right and through no fault of her own, still had to miss. She maintained a positive attitude throughout and jumped back into practice once she was cleared like she didn't miss a beat. Bryn continued to adjust to the varsity pace throughout the season. I wish we would have, had a, would have had a normal year that included a preseason so that she and the other newbies could have had that intense crash course. I admire her determination to learn, to grow, and to compete. I can't wait to see that growth continued into the off season beyond excited for the potential that next year brings for Bryn. Number six, Bryn Johnson. Haley made a major transition in her volleyball career over the course of this past year. She moved from the middle blocker position to the outside and for us, filled a void left by two Division I four-year starters. She embraced the challenge of serve, receive, and defense, finishing second on our team in both passing with a 1.93 average and dig categories with 142 digs on the year. 
She also finished second in kills with 122 this season. What I absolutely love about Haley is that she made this position her own. She didn't try to recreate the play of Emily or Hallie. She found her own style, and our team relied heavily on her throughout the season. She was our do a little bit of everything for us type of player. Leadership comes in so many different forms. Haley's teammates recognized her ability to connect to each of them, and they appreciated her balance of humor and intensity. Culture is very important to me as a coach and has been the cornerstone of success in this program. I chose Haley as our second captain because of her ability to build relationships. Statistics don't fully describe a player. They just give you a snapshot. You also have to factor in these intangibles that these athletes bring to the court. After one short season in a new position, Haley earned honorable mention All-State recognition. She contributed skills while also making the players around her better. Number four, Haley Gretz. Danny has waited a long time for her opportunity to contribute on the court for us. She saw some limited action her freshman year, followed by a season-ending knee injury at the start of her sophomore season. After surgery and rehab, Danny had yet another meniscus tear leading to a second surgery. I have never seen such poise in the face of adversity from a high school athlete before. She focused on what she could control and found roles that she could fill for us that were vital to our team's success. In my opinion, they were two of the most important roles on our team, leadership and ball control. Danny's leadership skills were clear to me before the season ever started. I asked her to represent the volleyball program at the school board meeting, speaking on behalf of the coaches and athletes. I was so proud of how confidently and eloquently she did this. Her teammates also recognized that her organization and ability to communicate were qualities we needed in a leader. Danny was the third and final captain this season. Danny finished the season with a team high passing average of 2.06. She had more passing attempts than any other player on our roster with 163 total. This is the second highest end of season passing average in the history of the program. She also led our team in digs with 144, barely edging Haley out who finished with 142. Her consistency in the backcourt was a key component to our success as a team. Number 12, Danny Lane. Amelia came into the season wanting to be a pin hitter and after the first match, found herself back in the middle. She knew it was what our team needed and therefore she embraced it. Although not the position she wanted to play, she lit it up with 100 kills, hitting 418 for the season. She also contributed 26 blocks. Those numbers are great, but what impressed me most was the way in which she did it. She hit the ball hard. My favorite still photos of the season are the ones that Sophie shot just after Amelia hit the ball on the outside. Her reaction, her teammate's reaction, just priceless. She also showed that she was a smart hitter too. Her hitting percentage almost doubled from her junior to senior years. That shows amazing growth. There was a point in time a few years ago that Amelia almost gave up volleyball. She was discouraged after a few middle school club seasons, yet with some wise words of encouragement, she persevered. She sought out better coaching in an environment that would push her to be the best version of herself. And personally, I'm inspired by her growth mindset and her willingness to get out of her comfort zone. She turned into an amazing player, and I'm glad that she took my advice all those years ago and didn't give up. Her teammates described her as driven yet easygoing, as passionate but also humble. Amelia is a layer to her team that will truly be missed. I'm excited to follow her success at the next level. Number 15, Amelia Armstrong. As you all know, Maddie lost her entire 2019 season to a knee injury. It was devastating both physically and emotionally. The road to recovery was so much longer than originally anticipated. She committed to countless appointments and hours of therapy so that she could be back in the gym with us this fall. When she wasn't able to play club ball last year, she chose to coach young athletes so that she could stay connected to the sport. So much can be learned from teaching the game to others. You never know how players will reconnect following an experience like that. But during our off-season team meetings, when we were away from the in-season competition, I get to see firsthand her connection to this team. We would not have been the same group without her, and I'm very proud of her resiliency. On the court, Maddie impacted our team the most with her setting and serving. She made smart choices in her set distribution and averaged 6.17 assists per set on the year. 
On senior night, she dished out 17 assists and tallied three aces. Maddie's ability to connect with her team is what the girls valued most about her. The words they used to describe her were outgoing, energetic, and bubbly. That positive energy was invaluable this year, as we did not know from day to day if our season would continue. I was lucky enough to be Maddie's first ever volleyball coach when she started back in sixth grade, and I'm grateful that we were able to have a senior season together to finish off her Wildcat volleyball career. Number nine, Maddie Morrow. I am so grateful that Bella decided to continue her volleyball career all the way through her senior season. She was an impactful player last year on the JV squad, both statistically and as a captain. Our varsity team can be intimidating due to the high level of play and the year-round commitment by most of the athletes. Bella knew that she didn't fit that mold, but when she and I chatted during the preseason, we talked about all of the positive ways that she could impact this team. Statistically, her numbers may not look the same as others. She had a great match on senior night against Menominee with three kills hitting 250. She also surprised us this season with her sweet setting hands. Each athlete filled out a survey on their teammates, and then the data was compiled and shared during our two-on-one -on -one meetings. Over half the team felt that setting was her best skill. Words that her teammates used to describe her were positive, sincere, thoughtful, and genuine, to name a few. As a coach, I saw all of that and so much more. Times when she doubted her own abilities, but didn't hesitate to jump in and give her best effort. Times when she surprised herself with what she was capable of. Times when she made tough choices to self-quarantine and miss two matches so that she wouldn't run the risk of any of her teammates getting sick. Bella was the definition of servant leadership this season, and I'm grateful that she left that imprint on this program. Number seven, Isabella Papungatoa. Anna has been such a key component in the success of this program for the last four years. It hasn't always been an easy road. We started off with a high her freshman year, finishing state runner-up. She had an amazing sophomore campaign, only to be followed by entry her junior year, limiting her to 25% of the season. I'm really proud of Anna for pursuing the right diagnosis and the commitment she and her family had to make in order to get her stronger and healthy again. This is not what she envisioned for a senior season in terms of length and competition, but as her coach, I'm grateful I had one more opportunity to be in the gym with her. Players of this caliber don't come along very often. Anna's numbers speak for themselves. This season, she led us in kills with 136, hitting percentage 507, and blocks with 33 total. She would have been a shoe-in for the first ever Big Rivers Conference Player of the Year had the BRC recognized awards. She was honored as a member of the state tourney all-tournament team, and she was a unanimous recipient of first-team all-state recognition. I chose Anna as our Wildcat Award winner, not because she's a Big Ten commit. I chose her because of the maturity she showed in continuing to lead in her soft-spoken way after not being named captain, because of the positivity that she brings into our gym, and because of her unwavering commitment to constantly improve her skills. She has never settled on past success. Her example is one that I hope all others follow into the future. Can't wait to watch her at the next level. It's going to be amazing. Number 11, Anna Wolf. To wrap up, I have some thank you shout outs I'd like to give, and I promise to try to be brief. I'd like to start with Raleigh Hall. He fought for us to have a season this year, and he handled the enormous amount of adjustments that had to be made each day to rosters and schedules because of COVID. Raleigh is retiring at the end of the year, so I'd also like to thank him for giving me an opportunity 11 years ago. I'd like to thank our school administration for supporting the decisions that athletes and families made to stay safe during the final weeks of our season. I'd like to thank the ETS program for their hard work in the weight room to make my volleyball players overall better athletes. I'd like to thank the Mike and Rob experience along with Jeff Meyer for their work on the broadcast. This is something incredibly unique to our program. It is fun in a normal year, but was invaluable this year since parents couldn't travel during conference play. Thank you isn't enough for all that you do. I'd like to thank my coaching staff, Anna, Melissa, Allie, and Sophie. No one could ever imagine all the things that these ladies were responsible for this season. Anna and Melissa were often on their own since we had to stagger practice times and played at different locations. I appreciated their leaderships with their squads so that I could focus on the varsity team. Allie did an awesome job building relationships with her JV athletes, 
but also took on different responsibilities this year, learning the iPad stats and helping out with the varsity when she could. Huge thank you to her. And then there's Soph. She has grown up in this program over the last eight years as a player and a coach. Sophie does stats. She does videos. She plays music for us. This year, she took on the role of letting me bounce a thousand ideas off of her and never once seemed annoyed by it. It was hard on me losing Fred after 10 years of us coaching together. I don't know if Sophie was aware, but she filled a major void for me this year, and I truly appreciate her for that. Outside of the gym, I'd like to thank my mom who lives with us because she makes sure that my kids are bathed, fed, and schoolwork is done on nights when I'm gone. I also appreciate her supporting my passion. Some things never change. She's been supporting my love of volleyball for 30 years. I want to thank my little kiddos, Ryan and Parker. They have a love-hate relationship with volleyball. They love cheering for our team and celebrating their success, but hate that their mom has gone so much. I'm grateful that they understand and encourage me to chase my dreams. I want to thank my two oldest, Michael and Maddie. They're off to college, but frequently tune into broadcast to cheer on the Wildcats. And a special shout out, congratulations to Maddie on a, success, on a successful season of Wildcat Trivia. And finally, the last of the five kiddos, I want to thank Morgan. I know it isn't easy sometimes having stepmom be your coach, but I appreciate the way that you take feedback and always have such a positive attitude. You do a great job of separating my roles in your life, and I value that. And then there's Mike. Your role is so much bigger than just the play-by-play -play guy. You get to listen to me when I'm excited about volleyball and when I'm frustrated. This year was full of ups and downs, and you rode that roller coaster with me, oftentimes talking me off the ledge. Thank you for your love and support. This is a team effort, and my team extends to my at-home crew. I love you bunches. Who knows what lies ahead? If I've learned anything this year, it is that nothing is predictable. What I do know today is that I'm grateful. I got a chance to coach the most amazing group of young women this fall. I hope that they learned as much from me this season as I did from them. Life is full of defining moments. Take advantage of every opportunity. I've got something they can't touch Power running through my blood Such a rush, I'm dangerous I've got something they can't touch Go down to my bones No fear in my soul I've got something they can't touch I'm dangerous Cause I'm bulletproof Yeah, yeah, bulletproof Yeah, yeah, bulletproof Yeah, yeah Go on and take your best shot Cause I'm bulletproof Soldier up, I was made for war Can't be stopped breaking down the doors Can't ignore my fiery sword Soldier up, I was made for war Cause I'm bulletproof Yeah, yeah, bulletproof Yeah, yeah, bulletproof Yeah, yeah Go on and take your best shot Cause I'm bulletproof Yeah, yeah, yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah Go down to my bones No fear in my soul You better leave me alone Me alone So you better leave me alone, me alone Cause I'm bulletproof, yeah, yeah, bulletproof 